What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to go through what you need to take with you to a pre-release. Um, I've already got my team up box. You're going to see later on in the video what I did once I got to pre-release and the deck I put together. But first I want to tell you what you need to take if you are deciding to go to a pre-release. So, first of all, what you need to do is make sure that you've gone onto Pokemon.com uh, and you've checked where your local event is. Now you can see that on the website, put in where you live and it'll tell you which game shop near you is running a pre-release event. Then what you need to do is you need to sign up to play Pokemon and get a player ID. Print it out like we've done here. Uh, this is Nahal's for example and it'll have your player ID on it and it'll just make it easier when you get there for registration. Going to pre-release, there's a few things you need to bear in mind. Now pre-release um, involves you creating a deck with 40 cards. So if you're going to do that, what you need to do is make sure you take some sleeves with you. So count out 40 sleeves, keep them separate. Usually in one of these elite trainer boxes you get 65 sleeves. So I would, before you go, count out your 40 sleeves so you've got them ready. Do you only have a limited time to put your deck together? I'll explain that to you in just a moment. Have your sleeves ready. Also take some extra sleeves with you. Um, take some extra sleeves of the ones that you counted out, just in case one or two of them split and you need to replace them. But also take, I take perfect fits with me. If you can do trades, you, and when you pull cards and they're valuable cards, you want to keep them safe. So sleeve them up in another set of sleeves. Take a little folder or a binder. I usually take one of these um, little albums to keep my good pulls in. Um, that's also worth taking. You'll also need to take with you some GX markers, some damage counters, uh, a poison marker, a burn marker, and a coin or a dice to be able to determine heads or tails. Um, if you don't have those, don't worry, you can get them from the shop. They usually sell dice there. Uh, try and get a coin if you can and something that you can use as a GX marker. So, that's pretty much everything you need to take. Apart from, I take a playmat with me as well. I take a backup battery uh, because it can be a long day depending on if you're running one or two sessions. Um, some cereal bars, one or two bottles of water or fizzy pop or energy drink. Um, because, it, like I said, it's three rounds, can be there for a while, people do linger around as well at the beginning and at the end, so you need to make sure that you take some food and drink with you um, just to keep yourself energised. Okay, so what happens once you get to pre-release? When you get to pre-release and you register, you will eventually be given one of these. It's a build and battle kit, so you've probably seen these before on our videos if you haven't seen previous pre-release advice videos. Take the sliding case off a lot of people don't realize that the top slides off so take that off and then you're presented with a deck so you can use this as a deck box to put your actual deck in once you've built it you open it up and inside you're going to get four packs um, of team up you'd also get one of these which essentially is an introduction to it but on the back gives you instructions as to what you're doing now you will get the four packs and you will get a sealed 23 card evolution pack here's a previous one from ultra prism so you get the promo card you get an online code card to build an online build and battle deck 23 cards in there and obviously you will have on the front like this has got a pre-release promo here the one that we got was nidder queen so it's sm160 um, so you're presented presented with nidder queen and also the evolution line that goes with that. And you can see that later on in this video when I actually open one of those and build my build and battle deck. You're gonna have 30 minutes generally to build this. So you gotta be quick. My tip for all of you out there, all the supporters you can, first of all, sort your, uh, once you've opened all your packs, sort your Pokemon out by type. Um, then what you need to do is you need to start looking at which ones you can't play. So for example, if you opened up, and let me show you what I've got here. If you opened up your packs and you found, let's just say, a Charmeleon and you didn't have a Charmander, you can't play that. So just put that to one side straight away. So start filtering through your cards. Make sure that anything you can't play, uh, I pulled uh, Galvantula, it's a stage one. I couldn't play it because I didn't have a Joltix. So you've got to think smart like that. So. Put the cards you can't play away, then start looking at what you have got in left. 
then you need to think right i don't ideally don't want to have more than two different types of pokemon unless they've got colorless attacks then you can start taking those in no problem anything that requires a colored attack and you you you've got there in front of you just make sure you're being smart about which ones you pick i wouldn't pick more than two different types of energy being used because you've only got 40 card deck that you can build once you've done that go through your evolution pack go through any other supporters that you've pulled so item cards and supporters but as many of them in as you can again there are going to be some supporters which stipulate you need something or another so for example i pulled an electro charger i couldn't play it because for each head shuffle an electro power from your discard into your deck i didn't have any electro powers so you can't use that again with water memory this Sil the Sil Valley gx is cards attached to there are no Sil Valleys in this deck so you've got to be smart about those as well Put everything you can play in your deck as far as trainers are concerned and then try and put in 12 ideally 10 to 12 energy split 50 50 or depending on the energy cost of the pokemon you've got if one requires say two psychic and your metal ones only require one metal maybe you want to go something like i don't know seven psychic five metal or four metal just so you got a good balance remember it's a 40 card deck that's pretty much my hints guys have fun enjoy yourselves it's usually three rounds and it's best of three games in each round um it is about everyone being on the same wavelength so nobody's gonna have got an advantage because they've got a more expensive or better card than you it's purely luck of the draw whatever you pull and open and being smart about building that deck so yeah good luck that's my guide to going to a pre-release now i'm going to show you a video with me at pre-release putting my deck together okay what's up everyone it's taj here uh, from pokey taj we're at pre-release we've just been given the go ahead to open up our pre-release kits so here we go let's see what we end up with oh i got another queen <laughs> okay the one that i was probably at least like to get Let's have a look. We all know what the rules are for pre-release. You're going to get the 23 line evolution pack. Fill the deck of 40 with everything we pull from this and the four packs we get here. So we have got one of each artwork here, which is pretty cool. We'll start off with Snorlax and Eevee. Uh, here's a new energy which we've already seen in Japanese, but let's see what we get here. So we have got Spiritomb, Iridium Forest, Rapidash, Tentacool, Bonita, Alolan Grimer, Cosmog, Litten, and Marik Reverse, and an Ariadactyl Regular Rip. I've heard people shouting they've got Charizard, so people have got Charizard promos. Oh, for a change I've got a white code card, and let's see what we get here. don't usually get white code cards at pre-release, my pulls usually suck. Uh, Electro Charge, Charmeleon, Water Memory, Weedle, Dratini, Alolan Grimer, Anita, Cosmog, we've got the Vulpix, and a Zera Aura Hollow, nice. Okay, move on to the third pack interesting to we'll see what I can build with this and I'll show you my deck later on and tell you how I got on but let's uh, get through this and see if I pull any GX's or tag teams we got Golda, Adana, all four of the ladies are in here, Chateau ladies, um, Cosmog Reverse and our Gal Galvantula and final pack at the end of pre-release, regardless of where you finish, we will be getting three prize packs. So I will show you what we guys what we get in that one as well, guys. Oh, I've got another green one now. Let's see what we've got here. At least I've got a zero around that. That's pretty cool. A Lolan Graveler, a Brock Script, Pupita, Magikarp, Pichia, Pichen, a Lolan Grimer, Bronzor, the TV, a Dragonair Reverse, and a Muck. We've got Jabba the Hutt. Okay, let's Somebody pulled a magic art and my lord, which must be a full art because it's not available as a regular art in this set. Right, let's have a look at our evolution deck. So we have got the Nidic Queen uh, promo, and we have got Ingo and Emmett, Pokemon Communication, Looker, 
specific GUI. Don't forget, you can get older supporters in these uh, evolution kits to help you get going. So we've got the Nidorans, obviously. We've got Grimer. Uh, so we've got a line of Grimer and Muck in here. A Jasmine, Pokemon Communication, another Looker, a Lily, which would be useful, a Skateboard. We've got a Farfetch'd, a uh, Ponyard, three of those, and two Bishops. Okay, I'm going to go and start building a deck. See you guys in a bit. Okay guys, I'm back home now. I finished. I showed you guys um, me opening my... Um, build and battle deck there at the game shop in Aldershot where I had my pre-release I was quite successful um, I won my first game round 3-0 should be 2-0 but we had so much time we played the third round third game as well second round the guy had a Latios and a Latias GX tag team which was becoming very challenging for me um, we ended up drawing that because we ran out of time in the third round is one all and then my final round I won 2-1 Again, very experienced player, quite challenging, but I ended up beating him in the end. So that was pretty good. So I thought I'd show you guys my deck and what I used. So for pre-release, this was really useful. This came in my evolution kit. Uh, it was a one, two, three, a Ponyard, and two Bishop. Bishop was great. Um, these, essentially, I was using one energy attacks on these. Rigidity was giving me 30 less damage from my opponent's attacks. And once I got up to a Bishop, if I had zero... Uh, at, and, and I had zero damage on this Pokemon. I was doing 120 damage and knocking out most people straight away before they had a chance to attack me. And those who weren't smart and were putting energy on their active uh, and not on their benched were being caught out by me quite quickly. So Bishop was one of my main attackers in this and it was part of my evolution line in this uh, opening. Nidoran, Nidorina, Nidoqueen. I only had one line of that. That was my pre-release promo. Um, used that once I think and I only managed to do 60 damage I think because I only had one um, evolved Pokemon on my bench no tell a lie I, I did hit it for 110 once uh, but yeah not so successful with that because it was only one line very difficult to get going and required three energy but something that was really successful for me was my Grimer line so I pulled a muck so there's two in the evolution kit and I pulled one from one of my packs so I had a three uh, three lines of Muck, Gr Grimer and Muck, which was great. The Grimer's first attack isn't amazing, Pound. Didn't really use that. I started getting some serious damage once I used Muck. It did 40 damage and it poisoned at the same time. And it did two damage per poison instead of one per turn. So that was really, really serious damage being caused by that. Its ability, Poison Sacks, special condition poison is not removed when your opponent's Pokemon evolve or devolve so that really helped keep that poison on their actives really really useful for me that was as far as other Pokemon I had a far fetched in there didn't use it at all set on my bench once uh, Alolan Grimer again didn't get to use it set on my bench but I had it in there as a double colorless attack and if I'd already got the poison on there it would have done an extra 50 damage so 70 for double colorless um, that again didn't use didn't really get around to it Supporters I had, Brock's Grit, um, which allowed me to shuffle six in any combination of Pokemon energy cards back into my deck. This was the last card in my deck. I was going to be decked out at one point, and this was the last one. I pulled it, played it, put six back in. That won me the game. So this was really useful to help me to win my um, second round game, which we ended up drawing that round. So that's pretty good. Ingo and Emmett, uh, I used that a few times. Basically, when I had no opportunity in my hand, it allowed me to discard my hand and draw five. I did that reluctantly a couple of times. Jasmine, um, let me search my deck for um, a metal Pokemon, but there was an instance where I went second and had this in my hand and I could search for up to five. Managed to find two, which wasn't great, but still really did help me to win that game. Two lookers, a lily, which I did manage to pull first turn about three times I think so I managed to draw until I had eight in my hand Professor Kakui that extra damage helped me a couple of times to win a um, couple of games Dana didn't really use this very difficult for your opponents to have a stage two in play a skateboard I used numerous times um, with my Bishop it is Bishop isn't it yep um, several times to retreat when it had damage on it to put another Bishop out so I could do that additional 90 damage with a fresh 
fish shop with no damage counters on it. Pokemon communication. This was really, really good. When I had stuff in my hand that I couldn't use, stage one, stage two, I put it back in my deck and I pulled the basic so I can stick it on my bench. Really, really useful. Viridian Forest, again, helped me a couple of times, but it helps your opponent as well. So you can draw, discard a card, um, and you can draw an energy. Um, I had one, two, three, four, five, six metal energy and five psychic energy in my deck. So like I said, I did pretty well. Won two rounds, drew the other, couldn't have asked for more. I'm still suffering from vertigo, so considering my concentration wasn't where it could be, to win two rounds and draw one against some really experienced players, I was extremely happy considering that I haven't played Pokemon for two months against people um, or even online. So just haven't had the concentration span recently. Then I got my three prize packs and this is what I got. So I got a Pangaro um, Rare and my um, Reverse was a Taurus in that one. And the next pack I got uh, Charmander Reverse. And ooh, what was my Rare in that one? I can't even remember. Oh, is it a Lolan? Here, let's show you where it is. Where have I put it? I've misplaced it. I'll show you guys in a minute. Um, Cavalian GX from my last pack and a Charizard Reverse Hollow as well. So, yeah, um, at least I got a GX and a Reverse Hollow. There we go. It's a Lolan Golem. I pulled as a rare from one of my packs. But, yeah, happy with these two for sure. Uh, it's nice to finally pull a GX at pre-release from a prize pack and a Charizard. And that was it. So guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you do need any help, tips with anything, just give me a shout. I'm available on Instagram and mainly on Twitter, at Poketaj. Always willing to help people out, give advice. And I hope you guys have a great pre-release and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.